The Atari Network is a fan channel and is not affiliated with Atari. The Atari logo and name is copyrights of their respective owners. Atari's 50th anniversary celebration kicked off with a bang, thanks to the release of the Atari 50th collection by Digital Eclipse. The game was a great love letter to Atari and its fans, and explored the various eras of Atari, through the game's videos, manuals, interviews, advertisements, and of course, the games themselves. It was a fantastic release, and Atari fans around the world praised it as the return to form for our beloved video game company. But the celebration didn't end there, as Atari decided another title would help reward the fans and bring in sales during the Atari 50th anniversary celebration. Thus, we were given Atari Mania, a game that I wasn't actually quite sure what it was supposed to be based off of the cover. It seemed like maybe a retro-style adventure using Atari's IPs and old characters, but it's actually something sort of like that but very different at the same time. Let's take a look at Atari Mania. In Atari Mania, you take control of the caretaker, a normal-ish person whose job it is to make sure the quote-unquote talent make their way to their respective games and that the Atari vault where they all seem to work and live stays clean and functioning. The caretaker doesn't appear to really like his job, or at least not anymore, and I'm not sure what that really added to the story. Of course, by the end of the game, he loves his job and the Atari characters again, as he's reminded what makes Atari so great along the way. But that part of the story is just kind of... I, I don't know, weird for the celebration? Or maybe it's just secondary to everything else that's going on. But it is the first part of the story you're introduced to. It just seems like a weird choice for a game celebrating Atari, that's all. But whatever, that's not important. As during this day in the Atari Vault, he finds several dead pixels that come to life and attempt to eat all your favorite characters in video games. It's up to you as the facility caretaker to take care of these dead pixel monsters, save the characters, and figure out what's causing all this. The entire way you're acquiring items to help pass by obstacles and enter new areas. But that's not really the meat of the game, and that's not really what you do most of the time. This game is sort of a micro-game marathon in the same vein as WarioWare. Each micro-game takes between 5 seconds to maybe a minute, with boss battles being a couple minutes in length sometimes. Atari Mania will mash up several classic Atari properties, such as Asteroids, Dark Chambers, and Human Cannonball, and make you pass between 4 to 15 levels of micro-games based on these titles. So for example, one micro-game might have you in an asteroid ship, and require you to survive against a falling breakout wall that you must shoot a hole through. Or you might be playing what would be a typical game of Yar's Revenge, but the haunted house ghosts and limited visibility are also introduced to the gameplay. This can make for some interesting and fun combinations, but they can also be hit or miss. Especially if you struggle with a particular game. Like for example, I've never been very good at Human Cannonball and eventually you're going to have to go up against four to five variations of that exact game. Not to mention that during each set of micro games, you can only really lose about four times before you have to start completely over. So again, the different combinations of Atari properties can be hit or miss, and they range from easy, exciting, brilliant, and engaging to boring, way too difficult, mind-numbing, and just plain odd. But I think if you're a fan of Atari, most of the combinations will hit with you, and the misses will be less frequent, which is good. But then there's the times in between the micro games, and that's sort of... Well, most of it feels unnecessary at first, as the story is sort of weak, and you see the ending coming right from the start, really. But I have to say, as you get closer to the end of the game, these parts require you to use combinations of the items you've acquired, and it's actually pretty neat. Overall, I don't mind these sections, and solving the puzzles can be pretty fun. The controls for the micro games are mostly pretty good and feel familiar, but there are a few oddities. The controls for the asteroid style ship feels off a little bit, and there's a couple others that feel similarly off. But most of the games control as you would expect. If you're not familiar with many classic Atari properties, then this won't be an issue as you really don't have any expectations of how these games should control. But I think most people playing Atari Mania will be pretty familiar with these games. Luckily, only a few of the mashups have these control issues. 
And there are some great ideas in the game, like a particular dead pixel monster that reverses your controls, adding another layer of challenge that I wasn't expecting. And the bosses are usually pretty fun and interesting to play against. But all in all, the story is actually fairly short, and if you're good enough, you could potentially complete the game in one sitting. But chances are, you'll get stuck a time or two, and the game should last you at least a couple play sessions. But beyond the main story, and the main levels, there are still plenty to do in the side missions, and facing off against the mice for various game manuals and goodies. The graphics are that sort of wannabe retro style that was all the rage a few years back, and it serves the game fine. It makes sense here, and I definitely would rather have this style than the poorly done 3D or the super clean 2D hand-drawn art stuff. If this game had cell phone grade 3D graphics, I think it would kill the adventure for most, myself included. And the audio is very well done here as well. The music is very upbeat and fun, and the sound effects are all good, especially the nostalgic ones. And that's what this game is all about, nostalgia. If you love Atari, then you'll have a blast recognizing all the different games that they've mashed together and seeing the unique spins this creates on our classics. But if you're not an Atari fan, I hate to say it, but this is going to be a much, much more confusing version of WarioWare, where that game had you do mostly common things that anybody could quickly recognize. This one requires a little bit of knowledge of the source material to really have a chance at the harder levels and the boss battles. So I wouldn't recommend starting your Atari journey with Atari Mania. But if you're an Atari fan, you'll have a good time pulling this one off the shelf every once in a while. Although I don't think it tops the Atari 50th collection personally. And I think that's why Atari Mania deserves three classic controllers out of five. The pixel art style fits the game very well and the audio is A plus material all the way through. It's fun seeing all your favorite Atari games and seeing how well they mash together. And of course, you have all the extras you get to collect, such as game manuals, covers, and you get to read through all of it. There's large, exciting boss battles, and they're usually the highlight of the game for me. I also think the micro game style really fits these retro games. But for the cons, I have to say some of the micro games and mashups are messes in my opinion, as in they're pretty hard to play and enjoy. If you don't know anything about Atari, then you likely won't be able to succeed as easily as you should. And the story is very weak and not that exciting. Also, some classic games controls, like Asteroids, doesn't seem to be done the way it should be. And that throws the gameplay off just a bit. But there you have it, guys. I think Atari Mania is a great game for Atari fans. And was an inventive way to continue the anniversary celebration. But if you had your choice between this and the Atari 50th collection, I'd say go for the Atari 50th all the way. It's much more approachable and solid overall. But if you're a big time Atari fan, you should grab both. But with all that said, do you guys agree? Have you played Atari Mania? What was your favorite mashup in the game? Let me know down in the comments below. With all that said, I'm the 7800 Pro System Gamer on behalf of the Atari Network, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Stay classy, Atarians.